Ladies and gentlemen, the S&P 500 is hitting a new low into the close of the day today, as well as the NASDAQ, because we just heard from Fed Jerome Powell. So we're going to get into the big quotes here in this video that is driving the markets right now. It looks like our assumptions about this being a bearish event looks like it might be correct although the S&P is only down 0.6% and the Nasdaq is down 0.6% as well it is a pretty small move for a fed meeting but what fed Jerome Powell says flies right in the face of what markets were expecting now notice at the same time as all of this is taking place apple is hitting a new low amc stock is holding up cool calm and collected four and a half percent it's not falling the same way the markets are and i think there's a lot of reasons for this and we'll get into it here in this video it looks like amc stock might just be ready to get a little squeezy so let's get into all of this market moving information hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not already to stay up to date with everything happening in the broad markets as well as our favorite stock guess what it is hit hit amc entertainment so let's get into this information first things first again the nasdaq is down about half a percent s p down half a percent as well tomorrow is going to be huge because you get apple earnings but really this speech just ended a couple of minutes ago you're only going to have about a half an hour of digestion today so it's possible tomorrow is going to be another big day. What we've seen in the past with Fed meetings, most notably during the summertime of 2022, you got some Fed meetings where the markets rallied 3% from this time, you know, after the Fed's statements and after the, the commentary, and then subsequently fell 4% the next day. That literally happened twice. So it's not like this move is definitive, but it's likely to be kind of the first little snowball going down the hill. And that mainly is because of what we said in the video earlier, because the markets were expecting certain things and the markets were pricing in these certain things and we did not get them. We got quite the opposite of what we were expecting. Now, number one, from my point of view, the reason why the markets are falling is because Fed Jerome Powell did not clarify a pause or not. He really focused on the need to be data dependent. Not, not saying that a pause was guaranteed going to happen at the next meeting like a lot of people wanted to hear. So there's a little bit of, you know, back and forth. People are trying to digest exactly what Fed Jerome Powell means by, you know, different data points coming in better or worse than expectations and how that's going to feed into rate hikes. It's hard to do that. And that's a big thing that kind of upset market expectations today. On top of that, the markets are expecting as many as, what is it, eight rate cuts by the end of this year? Two percentage points of rate cuts by the end of this year. Fed Jerome Powell said that is not our baseline. That's not what we're expecting. So he reiterated the same things that we have heard time and time again from the Fed. Markets were hoping that after this banking crisis, we're going to get rate cuts a lot sooner and the Fed's going to pause as well a lot sooner. Now, these are the biggest market moving comments after the conference or during the conference. Number one, Powell says it may be too soon to cut rates. Quote, we on the committee have the view that inflation is going to come down. Not so quickly, he said. It will take some time, and in that world, if that forecast is broadly right, it would not be appropriate to cut rates, and we won't cut rates. He added that demand and labor market conditions will likely need to weaken some more to see progress within non-housing services and deem rate cuts appropriate. So we're not there yet. And that sounds like we're not even that close to being there yet. Number two, cooling labor market points to possibility of avoiding a recession. Now, this was, I think, the most bullish thing that Powell said. He went on to say, quote, there are no promises in this, but it just seems to me that it's possible that we can continue to have a cooling in the labor market without the big increases in unemployment that have gone with many prior episodes. Wage increases have been moving down, and that's a good sign, down to more sustainable levels. I think that's the case of avoiding a recession is, in my view, more likely than that of having a recession. So this was the most bullish thing you got out of Fed Jerome Powell today 
was he doesn't think a recession has to happen. He's not really expecting a recession. And he also went on to say that historically, in the past, if the Fed has raised interest rates 500 basis points, five percentages, that you would already see the unemployment rate going higher. He pointed out that the in, the unemployment rate was higher when they started raising rates compared to now. Think about that. The unemployment rate was higher back in January of 2022 than it is today in 2023 after 5% of rate hikes. I think that's a crazy thing. And really, I haven't personally thought about it like that. So that makes me kind of reconsider some of the bearish thoughts that I've had about a recession because shouldn't you see this already, you know, being somewhat reflected? Again, that's why the jobs report coming on Friday will be so important because it's lagged behind. What is the labor market looking like right now? And keep in mind, Fed Jerome Powell knows what the jobs report is going to look like on Friday. He's already got briefed on that. He already knows that heading into today. So the fact that he did not put more weight on that, more towards leaning into a pause, kind of makes the markets a little bit, you know, jumpier and a little bit more fearful here today as well. Now, Powell also says more data is needed to see if the Fed funds rate is restrictive enough. And this this is a wild concept because throughout this whole rate you know, tightening cycle, it went from, you know, 3%, probably that terminal rate to four and a half percent to five and a quarter percent. And now the Fed's like, we don't know if it's restrictive enough. We're going to have to see how the data is. And the markets were expecting a firm pause at the next meeting. That's what markets were expecting. You did not get a definitive pause out of Fed Jerome Powell. So I think that's what is mainly causing the markets to be upset. Uh, it also caused JP Morgan's acquisition of First Republic an exception. The process of tackling inflation has further to go. And he does reiterate this multiple times saying, quote, inflation remains well above our long run goal of 2%. And he said, well above. And then he said, well above. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of interesting. He really emphasized that inflation is well above their target of 2%. Quote, inflation has moderated somewhat since the middle of last year. Nonetheless, inflation pressures continue to run high, and the process of getting inflation back down to 2% has a long way to go. He added, which I find this very interesting, added that inflation expectations for long-term uh, inflation remain well anchored, and the central bank remains focused on promoting maximum employment and strengthening purchasing power. Now, I find that interesting because the last Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey we got, yeah, Five-year inflation expectations remained at the same level, but one-year inflation expectations ju jumped the biggest that we have seen at all. It went from 3.5% or 3.6% uh, to 4.6%, and it was not commented on at all. Uh, we're going to skip that one. It says, no decision yet on pause in rate hikes, Powell says. Quote, a decision on a pause was not made today, the central bank chief said during his news conference and again that is one of the big reasons why you are falling right now and it says more rate hikes still possible powell says quote we are prepared to do more if greater monetary policy restraint is warranted he later added that a decision on a pause was not made today uh but said the change in the statement language around future policy firming was meaningful so he's emphasizing that it's more likely than not going to be a pause but if inflation comes in hot the jobs report comes in hot or just the current trend continues over the last couple of months you've seen the trend of inflation going higher despite all odds that it just continues to go higher and it's ramping back up again uh basically getting away from that forward guidance uh so it's really up in the air and that's going to make data points much more important from here especially coming on friday and then stocks briefly turn red as powell said the fed is prepared to do more uh and and that that's a key as well um they're not you know they're they're not convinced that inflation is uh, going to go down as quickly as what people expect, meaning they will do more rate hikes if they have to and if inflation does not continue to go down, in which it has started to ramp back up over the last couple of months, guys. So those were the big comments from Fed Jerome Powell. Long story short, if you wanted to boil this down to 
two things. It is that you did not get a definitive pause at the next meeting. So markets are going to have to look at each data point individually every time it comes out to make that assumption and to price that in for the next meeting. So no guarantee on a pause. And number two, no no inclination of, of rate cuts by the end of this year. Keep in mind what I've been saying, guys. Stocks rally for two reasons and two reasons only. And if you stick with this for your investing journey of your lifetime, you will do well. Stocks rally for two reasons. Because earnings are getting better or multiple expansion. Now, ever since 2008, stocks have seen multiple expansion when the Fed goes into less restrictive territory, right? When federal funds rates are low, that's when, you know, stocks tend to give you the best returns. Now, when interest rates are high, stocks can still go, you know, do well, but you don't really get multiple expansion. And in theory, if, if interest rates are going higher, so should earnings be going higher in a normal cycle. Think from 2005 through 2008, when the Fed took interest rates from a quarter percent or basically zero to 5%, five and a quarter percent before the Great Recession. Well, earnings were getting much better from 2005 through 2008. The Fed was raising rates. You don't necessarily need to see multiple expansion when earnings are doing well. But now you're seeing year over year contractions in earnings and you've seen massive multiple expansion in 2023. That's because markets are expecting Fed rate cuts. You're not going to get Fed rate cuts as far as Fed Jerome Powell is concerned. That makes the markets way upside down as far as valuations on stocks al alone. And that's ultimately what guides the market is valuation. Sometimes things can be out of whack for a while, but they always correct themselves, give it enough time. So those are the big reasons why the markets are reacting this way here today. On top of that, today and after hours, you're going to get Qualcomm earnings, Elber, Marley, uh, don't know if I'm saying that right. Solar Edge, Mercado Libre, Sunrum, Fastly, uh, Marathon Oil, Etsy, Ardilly, and HubSpot. Tomorrow's earnings are going to be much more important. You are going to get stocks such as Apple that report here in after hours, as well as Spotify, uh, Block, Coinbase, DraftKings, and Lyft, as well as Carvana that also report Thursday in after hours, guys. So that's going to be the next big catalyst, as well as the jobs report. We've talked about this many times. Jobs report comes out on Friday. And then tomorrow... Um, let's see what we have in store for economic data. So tomorrow you're going to get the balance of trade and some bond auctions, but that is pretty much going to be it. If we take a look at AMC stock, AMC stock is still up over 4% as we are heading into the close as stocks are selling off. The short interest of free float is currently sitting at 25.5%, 34% free flow out on loan, 100 74 million shares currently uh, out on loan. Days to cover at about 5, 100% share utilization. Now, we will get into AMC numbers more specifically and talk about how today's events are going to affect AMC, meaning we're about to fucking rip in the next video. So stay tuned for that one. I don't want to make this video too long on you guys. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.